Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your man, Dion Amade. On this week's episode, we got a very special guest for you guys. My boy, the speedster from Booker T. Washington, Micah T. Micah, how's it going, bro? It's going good. It's going good. How about yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. Man, football season's here. You excited? Yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> well, here at Ford High School Weekly, before we get into, you know, the nitty gritty, we, before we get to the hard hitting questions, we like to go ahead and get a little warm up and get the fans to know you personally. So do you mind if I ask you a couple of personal questions real quick? Yeah, that's fine. All right. So let's go ahead and start like this. If you could choose between a Corvette or a truck, what type of guy are you? Which one are you driving? Mm, probably say a Corvette. Corvette? Okay, mm. why is that? I like speed. <laughs> Perfect answer for you, man. Yeah. All right. Favorite NBA team? I'd say the Lakers. The Lakers. Okay, you're with the Lake Show. I'm not mad at mm-hmm. it. Why, what's up? Why, why the Lakers? LeBron fan. Uh, LeBron fan. That's I'm what I'm cool. talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's switch to, to, to our sport, football. Favorite NFL team? I'd say the Titans right now. Really? Why? Julio. Julio? Julio. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you you get big and famous, all right? They start Mm -hmm. to make a movie about your life. What actor is playing you? Michael B. Jordan. (laughs) How did I know you was going to say that? Why Michael B.? Why Michael B.? The look, sound, the energy. The looks and, and the first album. Yep. And first we album. already saw we could we already saw with the uh uh Black Panther. He can pull off the braids too. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> All right, one final question. Final question. All right, if you could have any meal, okay, any meal at all cooked for you, what would it be? Cajun seafood. Oh Cajun yeah. Seafood. Yep. Why why okay. is that? I'm just a seafood type of guy and I like Haitian food. I don't know something about it. <laughs> I'm at it. I'm at it. When we come back, we'll talk with Micah Tees about football and the upcoming season here on Ford High School Week. Stay tuned for tonight's Ford Game of the Week. Mike Zickenhorn and Rod Thompson will be in jinx as the 6A2 champion Bixby Spartans bring their 37-game win streak to Allen Trimble Stadium. They'll take on the 6A1 champion Trojans. That's coming up next on Cox's Your View Channel 3. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. I'm talking with my boy Micah Tees from the Booker T. Washington Hornets. Micah, now upcoming football season, there seems to be a lot of talk about Booker T. Washington and what they have, mm-hmm. what you don't have. Mm-hmm. It seems like a lot of people have you guys ranked third in 6A2 right now. Mm-hmm. What do you guys have to do to kind of, you know, change some minds of some of the doubters? Take every week as one week at a time. Not focusing on what anybody else is saying, just focusing on us and taking every week at one time, one game at a time. So as so as far as you know, the things that people are saying about Shaw, as far as Booker T. Washington and and how you guys are talented, but mm-hmm. it, will the talent be enough? What is what are some of the things that your coaching staff has, has been preaching to y'all inside that locker room? Really just shutting out everybody what everybody else has to say and just focusing on us and really just starting to, like, develop more as a player, you know? Because a lot of people, they look at, oh, we just have speed, you know, that's all we're good for. We don't focus on the fundamentals. But what the coach are doing is teaching us the fundamentals so we can get ready for the next level. That's what they're teaching us. They're trying to produce us for the next level, not just high school, but for the next level. And the proof is in the proof. It, it certainly is. Booker T having a lot of – of tradition and, and an abilities to to turn to players into athletes that shine at the next level. So mm-hmm. as far as this upcoming season, what are some of the key things that your team needs to focus on, you know, as far as X's and O's to kind of get to that next level? Mm-hmm. The main thing we have to focus on is discipline. Discipline and discipline. The stress on just harping on discipline. We got everything else, just discipline. 
I like that answer. So, I mean, it, it, and discipline could mean so many things from, you know, not being so penalized to finishing off the little things at the end of the game. What do you think that is the most important part about that discipline? What, what do you think as far as between the white lines, what it has to equate to? The little things, we got to capitalize on the little things because the little things is what matters. The little things are what we're going to come down to. So finishing uh, through the line, that's what's going to carry us into the fourth quarter and on top of the fourth quarter and help us win those tight games. I like it. I like it. So as far as getting better and, and helping your team, you know, reach that ultimate goal, what do you have to do as an individual? I got to do my part, do my role, play my role and play my role to a T and not let my team down. And if I do my role, then the team will be successful. Man, speaking of your role, man, you got a big one <laughs> to, to fill. You're playing on both sides of the ball for mm -hmm. the Hornets right now. Which side uh, do you prefer and which side do you have the most fun playing? I feel comfortable at both, really. That's what a lot of people have been asking, which side do I prefer, which side do I want to play in college. I feel comfortable at both. So, I mean, I don't really try to sell myself short on focusing on which side I like more. I just feel comfortable at both. All right, let me ask you this. What's your favorite part about playing wide receiver? Probably catching the ball and making something happen. So making a play at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Making a play. All right, All right then this, this answer is a little more challenging on the other side of the ball. What's your favorite part about playing in the secondary? Make, making a hit and making an interception. Like give, bringing that fire, bringing that energy to the team, you know. So any way that you can make a play, that's what you're down for. Mm -hmm. So is, are, are you concerned at all with the conditioning as far as being a, a player like most, not a lot of teams or not a lot of players have to play both sides of the ball. I mean, in this kind of high intense football, I mean, 6A2 is a very, you know, demanding classification. Playing both sides of the ball is very challenging. Are you concerned about the the wear and tear or the conditioning at playing that for night in and night out? No. Wherever my team needs me, that's why I'm going to fulfill, fulfill my role. So I'm not concerned about the condition. All I do is prepare and practice, and I'll be right for the game. So what are what are some of the things that you your coaches have told you because of the situation that you're placed in as far as preparing your body for 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 what's going to happen? Got to stay in shape. Got to take care of myself. Any little nicks and ticks, I got to take care of those so I can be prepared for Friday nights. I'm thinking a lot of things are going to happen for Booker T. Washington when it comes down towards the playoff football. So what are what are some of the things that you're looking forward to about you know, getting into the playoffs, and what is your team going to need to do to get into the playoff situation? We're going to need to take one game at a time, not look so far into the season, but look at what we have in front of us. That's what we're going to need to do. Take one game at a time, and we'll get there. And when we do get there, same thing. Take one game at a time, focus on little things, and we'll capitalize. And we'll come out on top. A lot of people think that going to play Booker T. Washington means dealing with Micah Tease and your boy Gentry Williams. How do you two handle that kind of pressure? We just take it on because when you're focusing on us two, you got to remember about Ethan Washington, Jaden King, Deion McKinney, Makai Chambers, Aiden Walker. You got to focus on those two, on those the rest of those guys, Jordan Drew. You have to focus on those guys. So when you put all your attention on us, it's just making us making it a lot easier. I like it. I like it. So we, we, we've talked about the upcoming season and everything that needs to get done for you guys to have success. But what are some of the goals that you guys have set that you want to accomplish this year? We want to put 355, uh, 350 yards a game on people. You know, we want to put 35 points a game on people. That's personal. That's personal team goals that we have on top of a, a state championship. But as far as personal team goals, Zilch, zero point scored, uh, scored on us. That's what we want. That's the standards that we're going to hold to it for us. And we're going to hold our team accountable to get those uh, standards. So as far as an individual, what are some of the goals that you have set for yourself? Myself, I want to have a thousand receiving yards and I want to have at least four picks. That's, that's kind of the um, personal goals I have. All right, man, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going I'm, I'm to be watching. <laughs> Okay. 
Well, Micah, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And, man, I can't wait to see what comes of uh, Booker T. Washington's season and what you do in the future, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Next up, Michael Knight from Prep Red Zone will join us to discuss Week Zero and get us fired up for Week One of high school football. And Ford High School Weekly continues. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Well, guys, it's that time of week. We're talking with my man from Prep Red Zone, Michael Knight. Michael, how's it going, man? It's going good. The regular season's underway and looking forward to joining you each week. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and get started. We started football last week. Week zero went underway, and me and you got to check out a couple of games. What were some of the things that you saw that you were interested in? Well, let's start with uh, the very first game that we were at on Thursday night in, in Moore, Oklahoma, as Booker T. Washington just absolutely dominated Southmore. It's going to be really interesting to see if anybody that faces Booker T. Washington, as long as the Hornets stay healthy, if anyone can pass for more than about 150 yards. I mean, Southmore, they have a really good quarterback in Noah Peters, and he couldn't do anything against the Booker T. Washington secondary. He threw a couple interceptions. I think he finished with only 30-something passing yards, and it, it made me think this Hornet secondary, I already knew that they were special coming into the year, but they, they could be, you know, historically special uh, as long as they stay healthy, of course. Yeah, man, with uh, my man Micah Tease and Gentry Williams back there holding it down, there was nowhere to throw that football. It was pretty impressive. And they got a couple guys on the outside that made some incredible plays in the secondary as well. As far as uh, other stuff around the, the, the both sides of the state, what did you hear? I think you got to go all the way down to, to the small classes, 2A, Class A, as uh, Cashin went down in Week 0, the, the preseason number one team in Class A, defending state champions from a year ago. Uh, they took on Rejoice Christian, and uh, they lost. And so that certainly woke a lot of people up and said maybe Class A is a little more wide open than we anticipated. And then a game that I was at on Friday night, Lincoln Christian just absolutely steamrolled bags. Their quarterback, Max Brown, is a special talent. He threw for three touchdowns. He ran for two touchdowns and uh, really put on a show against a Beggs defense that has talent as well. So it was a really good start to the season. But, Dion, man, the week one slate is absolutely loaded. We put out our top ten games on Monday, and I, I had to leave some really good matchups off the top ten. Uh, I wish it could have been a top 15 or a top 20 this week. But, man, I'm looking forward to week one because we got some great games coming up this week. Well, yeah, shout out to Rejoice Christian for man, having that big win in week zero. Some of the guys that I know down there were pretty excited about that. But as far as these week one matchups, what were some of the ones? Go ahead and talk to me about some of the ones that were on your top list and some of the one or two that you left off that you could have put on there. Well, the very top is one that you guys will have on Friday night, and it's a, a battle between two defending state champions, the Bixby Spartans and the Jinx Trojans. I can't wait for that game. Um, uh, you know, it, it's been a, a great rivalry over the last couple of years between those two programs. So that's without a doubt the game of the week in my mind. Uh, a couple of games that are not on the top 10 that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Uh, most notably, Vian and Ufala, another small school matchup. Uh, I really like Ufala coming into this season. And I think that, you know, Vian. If, they, if they're not careful, now they got a win last week against a, a team out of Arkansas, but if they're not careful, Ufall is going to throw the ball a lot. And that, you know, it's going to be a, a mixture of styles there as Vian loves to run the football. Ufall is going to want to throw it and air it out a lot. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a, a few of those matchups coming up this week. Man, the Iron Heads throwing the ball around a little bit. Well, to wrap this thing up, let's go ahead and do it like we do every week. What are some of the recruiting news that that's uh, hitting the newspaper front lines this week going into week one? The biggest story coming out of last week was Heritage Hall wide receiver Gavin Freeman picking up an offer from Tulsa. Uh, he committed to Air Force over the summer, and then you know after about a month, he decided to reopen his recruitment, and he got offered by TU last week. Gavin Freeman is a senior prospect from Heritage Hall, who you guys will be able to see on Thursday as they take on Millwood uh, in the game of the week there. 
Um, it, it's going to be awesome to see him perform because last year he had an outstanding season. And just to give you an example of just how dynamic he is, every player puts out their huddle highlights from, from the year that was. This kid not only had a highlight film, but he also had a separate one strictly to 50-plus yard plays. Now, that wasn't his idea. He's not a cocky kid. That was his, his dad's idea. Shout out to Jason Freeman. Played college ball at OU back in the day. Um, but he's a dynamic player, and I'm glad to see him finally getting the recognition that he deserves because, look, it's easy to overlook a wide receiver that's under six foot, and that's what Gavin is. But if you throw on the tape, if you've seen him in person, he is one of the most dynamic wide receivers in the state. He was offered by TU, and hopefully he'll get a few more after a, a good performance on Thursday against Millwood. Well, let's hope so. Well, speaking of recognition, Michael, where can people find you for all the latest information on high school football here in Oklahoma? Just go to PrepRedZone.com. We're all over the country, but of course, go ahead and click the Oklahoma tab and that'll take you to our website. We have coverage coming out every single day throughout the football season. Also have a coupon code for you that'll save you 25% if you subscribe and that is coupon code night 25 that's k-n-i-g-h-t-2-5 that'll save you 25 percent off a new subscription we're going to be all over the state this week we were at i think six games total last week i think it'll be close to closer to seven or eight this week so we're going to have coverage from all over the state getting you ready for high school football throughout the 2021 season well thank you michael knight and we can't wait to see you next week to see what else you have to say we'll talk to you guys next week Appreciate it, man. Well, guys, we were also all over Oklahoma last week with week zero, and we got some highlights for you. Make sure you stay tuned after this commercial break. Flushed out of the pocket, throws, has a receiver downfield. Great fingertip catch, and it's going to go the distance if he didn't step out of bounds. And it doesn't look like he did. The referees are still right down. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Week zero of high school football is in the books. Let's check out some of the highlights of last week's Ford Game of the Week telecast, beginning with Booker T. Washington and Southmore. Let's take a look at some of our highlights and tell us the story on how this game and this score came to be. Alongside is my partner, Dion Amade. Dion? Yeah, it was a lot of exciting action to start this thing off. Dion McKinney was the one that got it going, though, with that touchdown stamper into the end zone for the first four of the game. Then this big-time interception on the outside by Isaac Covington led to a oh-so-sweet touchdown by Micah Tease, and then my man, Lathan Boone, lays it up for Purdue, and he comes up and grabs it. And right here, an interception by King, and that one leads to this touchdown by Lathan Boone as he runs it in. And not to not the last but not least, another touchdown by not one but two running backs from Booker T. And then the backup quarterback himself, Fane, gets it to the end zone and takes a defender with them. But the Sabercats wanted to get into the end zone themselves, so they do on this big-time special teams play by Bennett as he takes those gold cleats and goes all the way to the end zone for the Sabercat touchdown. 51-7, the final score. Let's take a look at some of the post-game numbers. They usually tell the story on how the game played out, so let's take a look and see exactly what both teams did. Yeah, the big difference, like halftime and like now, it was the passing yards for Booker T. They got on the board with those big-time plays, and you can see them happen continuously throughout the night. Rushing yards, pretty impressive there in the second half, 227 to end the game, and turnovers was a big story. To, uh, an interception a couple fumbles it was a big time play night for Booker T Washington and the Sabercats they got some things to improve all right Booker T Washington wins it final score 51 to 7 let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights in this one and Sepulpa started things off Zach Mason to Xander Connell Rod a 10 yard or 12 yard touchdown pass yeah and they got the rolling early got that first score and now the other score with this guy here Number four, D'Angelo Mitchell, he's able to come and make that touchdown. Didn't hear much from him late in the game, able to get it going. And here's our play of the game right here, and just rolling out. Now you see this guy. He had a huge game when you talk about number 13, Brody Rutledge, with that touchdown from Pittington. And it was all Sand Springs after that. And this guy, Blake Jones, our player of the game, 
He was punching into the end zone four occasions. He was able to get it done for this Sendai team. And, boy, they just kept rolling and rolling in this matchup again. Hey, that's not a replay right there. That's Blake <laughs> Jones again. The offensive line doing a great job of blocking. He's in there again. The senior getting it done. Says he liked that spicy chicken also from Chick-fil-A. The he deluxe. Gets it done. The deluxe on him. And he was deluxe tonight. And then said uh, Sepulpa trying to come back. The nice play that time. That was a great pass by Mason. That guy, Colt Morton. Able to get it in, and hey, there he is again, Zig. Mr. Jones punching in one more time. And boy, and this is the wheels right here that we talked about this young man, Tyrese Jones. Since Sepulpa wasn't giving up, Jones able to turn on the wheels. Hey, get through the tape for the touchdown. But it was too much of this guy right here again. Coming into your screen, Mr. Blake Jones. Still in the Highway 97 rivalry for Sand Springs. Coming right back again, going to the air this time. And another big-time play. Look at that grab right there. Jacob Blevins that time able to punch it in from Pennington. And the Highway 97 rival, when we look at the numbers, Zig, look at the rushing yards, 189 to 171. Look at the passing. Mr. Pennington, 247. First downs, 23. Only one turnover. Quite a few penalties in this matchup. But Sand Springs, just a little too much, Zig. 53 to 26. They get the win in this big rivalry matchup. Talk, talk on it in great field position. That one's blocked and recovered by Chuck on the end zone for a touchdown. Be sure to go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and replays of the Ford game of the week. And check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. Stay tuned for tonight's Ford game of the week. Mike Zickenhorn and Rod Thompson will be in jinx as the 6A2 champion Bixby Spartans bring their 37-game win streak to Allen Trimble Stadium. They'll take on the 6A1 champion Trojans. That's coming up next on Cox's Your View Channel 3. Only the best in Oklahoma, like Micah Tease, make the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Dion Amade. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92.